Cyborg soldiers have been an appeal of cinematic fiction since the 80s. Movies like The Terminator, Robocop, Nemesis, each depicted half-human, half-machine soldiers who never tire, never quit, and are designed to kill. Welcome back, sleepyheads, and thanks for tuning in to another episode of Sleepy Aliens Perspective. Of course, I want to continue my discussion on cyborgs and cybernetics, because despite the fiction lore, we still have to wonder where researchers and scientists are with cybernetics and transhumanism. The one organization that we should all be keeping an eye on when it comes to cybernetics and tech advancements is DARPA. DARPA is a branch within the U.S. Department of Defense that was created in 1958 by President Dwight Eisenhower. It was created in response to the Soviet Union's release of Sputnik. DARPA is responsible for developing new technologies for the military. DARPA is heavily funded. In fact, for 2023, DARPA was allocated $4.1 billion. But don't worry, the previous year, it was only $3.9 billion. From an outside perspective, DARPA has free range when it comes to their research developments. They've created precision weapons, including bullets that can change direction in mid-flight, high-energy lasers that can neutralize missile attacks, flying trucks that can operate in air or on ground, LS-3s which look like four-legged bisons without heads, and they can help soldiers in the fields carry gear, or maybe even take the load off and check and see if there's an IED ahead of them. DARPA has also created stealth technologies, the very protocols that created the internet, voice recognition software. DARPA is also responsible for the Terminated mass public surveillance program that was implemented through a social media platform that they called LifeLog. Fascinating enough, LifeLog was terminated the same day that Facebook was released, causing an immense amount of speculation and conspiracy theories. I should also mention that DARPA has been experimenting with RNA vaccines. So they must be sharing notes with Bill Gates, or at least having dinner, I'm not sure. But never mind all that, sleepyheads, DARPA is just a research and development agency. There's nothing to worry about, so let's just explore some of their cybernetic projects, like we're just touring their secret labs and going through some DoD files. Now, I have different beliefs on when the military actually started developing their neural brain chips, but for the public's sake, I will just say that we became aware of those developments in 2016. And these neural brain chips connect humans to machines and increase neural capacity. So the neural enhancement will connect soldiers to drones, weapon systems, and other remote systems. The neural enhancements not only include the brain chip, but also electrodes that are implanted within the brain as well. So it's a lot of machinery going into the body. The neural enhancements will also allow soldiers to telepathically communicate with each other and translate any language they need to on the spot. In 2018, the DOD, through their Biotechnologies for Health and Human Performance Council, examined the feasibility of cyborg eyes. The council was deciding whether the ocular enhancement should be placed over the eye 
whether an eyeball should be removed and replaced with a cyborg eye. Now, the DoD is expects to first give the ocular enhancements to soldiers who have lost some or most of their vision. In addition to that, they have been working on these implant sensors that go beneath the skin to control and stimulate muscles. This will help soldiers, you know, maintain their stamina, decrease injury and mortality rates, and also help soldiers who have lost limb function. Auditory enhancements will occur by replacing the middle ear bones and the cochlea with cyborg mechanics. And just like the ocular enhancements, the auditory enhancements will first be provided to soldiers who have lost significant hearing. In 2020, DARPA announced their cyborg implant known as the adapter. The adapter is implanted within the gut and will contain bacteria capable of producing therapeutic substances on demand. The adapter will help strengthen soldiers from health issues that often stem from consuming unsafe food and water because two of the most common issues soldiers face are diarrhea and dehydration. So before soldiers are about to consume food or water, they'll be able to activate this adapter that will allow them to safely consume. The adapter is also capable of releasing medication and assisting soldiers with sleep deprivation and sleep disruptions. The adapter does this by releasing the healthy gut bacteria and also targeting the hypothalamus, the very part of the brain that regulates the release of melatonin. Now, those are just a few of the cybernetics and cyborg projects that I could find that are being developed through the government and DARPA. But you better believe if they're being funded $4.1 billion, they have a lot of other stuff going on. And there's only so much that they'll reveal to the public in mainstream time, not only to protect their projects from other countries developing similar weapons and systems, but also because, well, <laughs> the American public is often left in the dark when it comes to what goes on within these agencies who develop weapons and technology. And just like everything else, we are told what they want us to know. But regardless, these cyborg enhancements will be streamlined by 2050 within the military. It's also important to note that the other countries that I could find that are developing cybernetics and cyborg soldiers were France and China, which France surprised me, but China definitely not. I must also say that I couldn't find anything about Russia designing their cyborg soldiers, but like I said in my previous episode about predictive programming and the peripheral, Russia has been developing Iron Man suits for their soldiers. So it would not surprise me that they've also been developing cybernetics for the cyborg soldier rollout. Many have a lot of questions about DARPA and the US government's race to redesign humans. One of those questions are, what issues will arise during the rollout if some soldiers have these cyborg enhancements while others don't? In my opinion, I believe that the fact that some soldiers will and some soldiers won't will inevitably lead to the mass implementation of cyborg soldiers. 
So this problem will essentially create an optimal solution for the U.S. government. Another question is, will cyborg soldiers be overworked, especially if they are able to rejuvenate their muscles and keep their stamina going and help them not get sick in the field? It will just allow them to have longer shifts, essentially. But my answer to that is, aren't they already overworked? And aren't they conditioned to be physically exhausted, verbally and emotionally submissive? So what will happen when a soldier leaves the military who has these cyborg enhancements? Because most of these cyborg enhancements will be permanent. Consider the episode I did on predictive programming in the peripheral. In that show, the character Burton, who is played by Jack Rayner, had to live with his cyborg enhancements post-military discharge. So he's been physically and normally augmented for combat, and the adjustment distorted his civilian life reacclimation, and it created new societal divisions because he definitely didn't feel like he fit in with normal society. And I think that's something to definitely think about. My main issue with the U.S. government and DARPA is that they only show us the dark side of cybernetics. They have essentially created a negative programming for the general public to associate cybernetics, cyborgs, with war. And this is not only demonstrated through film and television, But any of the news articles that are released, any of DARPA's press releases, it all pertains to military advancement. This creates a fear complex, and it constantly leaves the public in the dark, wondering what kind of threat would require such advancements. And this fear complex ultimately makes the public dependent on the military. And it makes us have to believe that they are protecting us and ensuring that whatever threat may come, that the $4.1 billion that was allocated to DARPA in 2023 is completely warranted and necessary. But don't worry, sleepyheads. Aliens aren't real, and none of this is about profit and social order. Sleepyheads, if you have any DARPA facts or comments, be sure to mention that below. But other than that, sleepyheads, that's all I have for this episode. I hope you have a good night and we will talk soon.